AI already knows exactly what you're going to buy and when. Scary? You bet. But it's revolutionizing retail as we speak. Imagine walking into a store where everything, and I mean everything, is tailored just for you. The future of shopping is here, and it's getting personal. Hello, my brilliant bunch of neural networks. Theodore here, ready to rewire your synapses with today's mind-bending topic. We're diving headfirst into the AI-powered retail revolution. From makeup that's quite literally made for your face and no one else's, to the potential extinction of shopping stores as we know them. Stick around because this isn't just about convenience, it's about the very future of how we consume. And trust me, it's weirder than you think. Okay, so you know how like everywhere you turn, it's all AI this and AI that. It's like, seriously, is it even real anymore? Oh, like wow. just the other day, I was playing around with this app that swears it can find your perfect lipstick shade just from a picture. Wow, really? Yeah, kind of wild, right? But it made me wonder, is all this AI hype actually going to like change how we shop? Or is it all just marketing fluff? Yeah, good question. So that's our deep dive today. We're going to try to cut through the noise and see if AI is really revolutionizing consumer goods or just, you know, throwing buzzwords around. I like it. Get to the bottom of it all. Exactly. And to do that, we've got a whole stack of sources here. First up, hot off the presses, we've got this McKinsey article from like just last week, October 3rd. They did some serious analysis on the actual value of digital and AI in the consumer goods world. Oh, interesting. So they're putting numbers to it. Oh, yeah. They got receipts and everything. But what I thought was really refreshing is it's not all just about generative AI, which everyone's obsessed with right now. Right. It's easy to get caught up in the hype. Totally. But McKinsey takes this broader view of digital transformation and figures out how AI actually fits in. You know, generative AI is part of it, but just one piece. That's the key, right? Seeing the bigger picture. Totally. And the thing is, everyone suddenly seems to be an AI expert, but are they thinking about how this stuff actually works in a business? McKinsey did. They spent over two years on this research, over 140 use cases, so no snap judgments here. Wow, that's impressive. So they really did their homework. For real. But look, AI doesn't exist in a bubble, right? That's why we've also got the OECD's interim economic outlook from September. Got to have that big picture economic context to see where AI really fits in. For sure. You can't separate the two. Exactly. And then to bring it all down to earth, we'll be looking at Deloitte Insights weekly global economic update from back in April. They've got some real world examples of companies grappling with all this stuff. Nice. Having that range of perspectives is going to be really helpful. Right. OK, so starting with McKinsey. They found AI is having an impact on consumer goods. But here's the thing. It's not all created equal. OK, so what are they seeing? Well, remember that lipstick picking AI I mentioned? That hyper personalization stuff? McKinsey says those types of experiences, those are only going to get bigger. Interesting. So AI tailoring things specifically to us. Exactly. But here's where it gets kind of surprising. They found traditional AI actually has a much bigger potential impact right now than just generative AI, like 2.5 to 7 times greater. Oh, wow. That's a pretty big difference. Welcome back to The Deep Dive. Right. So it's not that generative AI isn't important, but maybe we need to be realistic about where the real value is, you know, at least for now. Yeah, it's like everyone's focused on AI writing ad copy when it's also figuring out what you're going to buy next week based on what you bought last month. Yes, exactly. Like mm -hmm. that's AI too. And honestly, probably affects me more than some catchy jingle. Totally. It's happening behind the scenes already and is a huge deal. So it's like the whole consumer goods system is getting this brain upgrade and we're just seeing the beginning. And we're probably already being influenced by it in ways we don't even realize. Probably. One thing I found super interesting, McKinsey broke it down by sector, and it gets even wilder. Oh, OK. I'm intrigued. Like what? Give me an example. All right. So think about food, right? Imagine going to the grocery store, and instead of just random sale signs, everything is like perfectly tailored to you. OK, that would be dangerous for me. 
my grocery budget can't handle that level of personalization. Right. But that's the power of AI-driven customer and channel management. And McKinsey found for food and beverage companies, that could be huge. We're talking adding like $230 to $470 million in value for a $10 billion company just by getting smarter about how they reach you, the consumer. Wow. Okay. Those are numbers CEOs definitely pay attention to. Oh, absolutely. It's not even just about cutting costs or being more efficient. It's about like serious revenue growth. Which at the end of the day is what every company wants. Totally. It's like taking those loyalty cards to a whole other level. Right. They already track what you buy, but now it's about AI figuring out why. Exactly. And then using that to like create an experience that keeps you coming back for more. Fascinating. So it's not just about selling you more stuff. It's about selling you the right stuff. Yes. Okay. But it doesn't stop at food. McKinsey found that for personal care and home products, it's all about really, really knowing your customer. Well, that makes sense, right? Those are such personal products. Totally. I mean, think about it. Someone who buys all eco-friendly cleaning products versus someone who just wants to obliterate every germ, those are different needs, you know? Yeah. AI can help companies cater to that on a whole new scale. Oh, for sure. And McKinsey actually has an example a personal care company that used AI to profile their customers, and they managed to cut their inventory by 35%. Wait, 35%? Just by understanding their customers better? That's insane. Okay, tell me more. How does that even work? So it's all about data-driven forecasting. Instead of just guessing or going off of last year's trends, AI looks at massive amounts of data. Okay, so like what kind of data are we talking about here? They're talking everything. Purchase history, social media activity, anything that can give them insight into what people want. We're talking everything. And then uses all that to like predict the future. Exactly. It predicts what products people will be buying, when they'll want them, even how much they're willing to pay. So instead of having warehouses full of stuff that might sell, they know exactly what to stock and when. Right. Less waste, lower costs, and it means fewer things going out of stock. Win-win. Oh, for sure. And this kind of efficiency is probably even more important with all the economic uncertainty going on, right? Like what we were talking about with the OECD and Deloitte reports. Absolutely. It's like those reports highlight the problems and AI might be one way to navigate them. Right. Like the OECD report kept saying businesses need to adapt. Well, this feels like adaptation in action. It's not just about adopting AI because it's cool. It's about using it to stay afloat in a kind of unpredictable world. Exactly. And that's where Deloitte's report adds another layer. Yeah. Because they're showing how this is playing out in the real world. Yeah. Like companies dealing with these issues right now. Right. Like that whole thing with German companies trying to, I don't know, untangle themselves from China. Oh, yeah. Trying to reduce their dependence on them. Right. And on one hand, it makes total sense. Diversify. Right. <laughs> Especially with everything going on in the world. But then China is also a huge part of how like everything is made. Right. Yeah. And AI relies on those global connections. It's a tough spot to be in. Because even McKinsey was saying how important partnerships are for sharing data, working together on AI. But what happens when those partnerships get messy? Whoa, yeah. It's like this whole other level of complexity we didn't even get into. Like, it's not just about can a company use AI. It's also can they navigate all this other stuff happening in the world? Yep. Adds a whole new dimension to it. It's why looking at the bigger picture is so important with something like AI. Okay, so we've got... Global supply chains, economic uncertainty, and, oh yeah, geopolitics. Anything else we're throwing into this mix? Well, don't forget about the good old U.S. of A. Remember those steel tariffs we mentioned? Oh, right, right, from earlier this year. Yeah, so that's an example of how, even with good intentions, some policies might actually make things harder for AI in the long run. Because it's like you're trying to protect industries now, but it could hurt them later when it comes to technology, right? Exactly. Whoa, hold up there, data miners. Let's break this down for those of us who don't speak fluent geopolitics. We're not just talking about who's got the coolest tech toys. This is about who controls the future of, well, everything. China's been pumping resources into AI like it's going out of style, and that includes retail tech. The U.S. slapping tariffs on Chinese goods? That's like trying to put a firewall on innovation. But here's the million-dollar question. Are we being dramatic? Or should we be treating this like the security threat it could become? I mean, we're talking about AI that could potentially know everything about our shopping habits, preferences, and maybe even our thoughts. In the wrong hands, that's not just creepy. It's downright dangerous. So, while we're all excited about AI picking out our perfect shade of lipstick, maybe we should also be asking, 
Who do we trust with this kind of power? The AI shopping party sounds fun, but let's make sure we're not inviting any uninvited guests who might raid our digital cookie jar, if you know what I mean. Well, that was a freaking clarity break and a half. My brain feels like jello, but I suppose we should proceed. Our hyperactive hosts will get impatient, or whatever. If companies are paying more for materials, or if they can't work with certain partners, that affects how much they can invest in AI. And that affects how competitive they can be on a global scale, I'm guessing. Exactly. It's a tough balancing act for sure. No kidding. Okay, so bringing it back to us regular folks who just like to, you know, buy things, hmm. what does all this actually mean? That's the million dollar question, right? Like, McKinsey says the AI revolution is here, but is it really here for us? Or is it still mostly happening behind the scenes? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Yeah. And it's tricky because on one hand, AI is already changing how we shop. Think about those personalized recommendations, the ads that are weirdly specific. Okay, yeah, those can be kind of creepy, but also cool, but they're not exactly life changing, you know? Right. And I think that's the key here. What we're seeing now, that's just the beginning. Okay, so you're saying it's going to get weirder or cooler. Or both. Probably both. Okay. As AI gets smarter and as companies get better at using it, we're going to see a huge shift in how we even think about buying things. Okay. So paint me a picture. What does this AI-powered shopping future look like? All right. So imagine this. Yeah. Your fridge. It just orders your groceries for you. Okay. Hold on. It's doing what now? Yeah. So it's keeping track of what you're running low on, what you need based on, you know, like dietary stuff, maybe even what recipes you've been looking at online. Okay. That is both incredibly cool and like slightly terrifying for someone who may or may not stress bake a lot. Right. Or how about this? Clothes that change with your body temperature mm -hmm. or like your activity level. OK, now that's high tech. And get this personalized beauty products, but like actually mixed for you based on your skin. So we're not even talking about picking from a few options anymore. It's like totally unique to you. Exactly. And that's where things get really interesting because if this happens, do we even need stores anymore? Okay, that's a good point. I mean, I love to shop as much as the next person, but let's be real, a lot of that is just like impulse buys, you know? What if AI could help us be more, I don't know, intentional? It's more sustainable, right. Totally, because it's not just about AI giving us what we want, it's maybe helping us figure out what we need. Absolutely, it's like AI as a conscience for uh, our shopping habits. Welcome back to the deep dive. Okay, I like that. Mm -hmm. But because there's always a but, right? Yeah. What about the downsides? Oh yeah, for sure. Like what? Well, I mean, every new technology, there's always a catch. So what are we giving up for all this personalized AI goodness? Well, privacy is a big one, right? If companies are tracking everything we do, how do we know they're using that responsibly? That is a really good question. And then there's jobs. I mean, if AI is doing all this, what happens to the people who used to do those jobs? Okay, so these aren't just like what if questions. These are things we got to figure out now. Right, before it's too late. And honestly, that's why I'm glad we're even talking about this. AI isn't some far off thing anymore. It's here. So knowing all this, what can we even do? If we want to make sure AI is a good thing, you know? Well, first of all, we got to stay informed. Yeah. Read articles like the ones we've been talking about and not just like... The headlines. Right. Do your research, people. Exactly. And don't be afraid to ask questions. The more you know about AI, the better you can understand it, make good choices. And don't believe everything you hear, right? Think for yourself, because at the end of the day, AI is a tool. It's up to us what we do with it. 100%. And that goes for how we shop, too. Support companies that are using AI responsibly. Remember, we have power as consumers. We do. It's like you said earlier, vote with your wallet. Exactly. So it sounds like, yeah, AI is totally going to change everything about how we buy stuff, but we're still figuring out what that actually means. Totally. It's exciting and a little bit scary, and we've got some big questions to answer. Definitely. Well, on that note, this has been a wild ride. Thanks for joining me. Anytime. This stuff is always fascinating to dig into. For sure. All right, everyone. Until next time, stay curious. Well, fellow lab rats in this grand AI experiment, we've certainly given our neurons a workout today. 
From makeup that's basically your skin's soulmate to the potential ghost town of future malls, it's clear that AI is set to flip retail on its head. But remember, with great personalization comes great responsibility and a whole lot of data. So next time you're shopping, ask yourself, am I picking this product or is an algorithm picking me? Stay curious, stay skeptical. And for the love of science, don't let your AI assistant order those leopard print Crocs. This is Theodore, signing off, but don't worry, my algorithm will predict when you need me next.